We can have some more fun, huh? Very simple, no bass, no percussion. There isn't any percussion on any of these songs in the in River of Starlight in this album. And then there'll be a sixth song coming out in March, which will be a, kind of similar to May the Long Time Sunshine Upon You All Loves It. But something new and it kind of a prayer for all of us that's really touches the pulse of what's going on right now. And that'll that'll be kind of the last track on the album. But I've been enjoying releasing one at a time because, you know, each song is like a child. And, you know, people ask you, what's your favorite song? I don't know. What's my favorite grandchild? <laughs> I love them all. <laughs> you know, and different times, different songs touch your heartstrings. It's like different grandchild touches your heartstrings. You know, now this is listed in uh, Spotify and everything under Guru Ganesha Singh. I mean, we, we had an interesting time because... We tried to merge Gurganesha Band and Gurganesha Sing on Spotify, but there is, you know, there's some interesting things that we haven't figured out yet. So you have to kind of look up if you want to hear the band songs, you look up Gurganesha Band, one word. If you want to hear this new solo stuff and solo stuff I've done in the past, then you look up Guru Ganesha Sing. Yeah, it's I mean it's a little bit different discography. The band is a very collaborative effort, and I love it. This band still lives. But Cotton wanted this solo music that Spirit Voyage is releasing as a uh, separate. A different, a different sound. Different, it's, when you, it's when you want it to be calmer. <laughs> and the Gurgan Edge Band is when you want to dance joyfully. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, it's truly incredible. It sounded like you really are on the path of listening to what your heart desire and um keep bringing out music and uh, keep creating so just to clarify really quick to pinpoint i think maybe it's safe to say to pinpoint that exactly moment that guru ganesha that you have found your true calling for your life was that moment uh you mentioned not too long after your lsd trip that uh you were at the live concert and you saw jerry uh, jerry garcia playing the guitar on stage right so that was that moment you when you found your true calling how old were you at the time and uh which year was it roughly uh, i was about 19 at that time and from that moment on, I had been, I had played guitar and had lessons from age eight to twelve. But upon hearing Jerry, I, you know, I'd heard some of the recorded music, but upon seeing him live, I, I must have spent the rest of that uh, year. I think it was my freshman year or sophomore year in college, in the basement of the dormitory, playing guitar all night long, every night, <laughs> trying to you know just wanting to see if I could transmit that kind of joy through the instrument. You know, I, I never really sang way back then. It was working with Sonata for those 10 years that really helped. She was always encouraging us to sing. And uh, and I started to realize that, hey, we can all sing. We just carry around these self-limiting beliefs that maybe got planted in there by somebody, some authority figure, oh, you can't sing. Da -da 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 -da. But you know, being with Sonata and singing with thousands of people sometimes together. I, and I started to enjoy hearing my own voice too, not just others' voices. I'm sorry, I, I segued off. That wasn't the question. No, 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 that's um, that's perfect. Actually, um, when you're saying that, it just reminds me of um, something. Rewatching this music uh, last night from Sanam Fest 2012, when you all were singing Th uh, Thousand Suns, and it's just absolutely incredible. I just got back on YouTube to check. Um, it's that video about to hit 1 million views. What a beautiful energy at that gathering. I, I'm not sure, was, was it 2012 or 2013? One of those. And Guru Singh was sitting on stage, wonderful teacher of Kundalini Yoga, sitting next to me and singing with us. We recorded music. Uh, some beautiful stuff in the early spirit voyage days, uh, one called A Game of Chance, C-H-A-N-T-S. And that's the one that the, the multi-Grammy award winning Scott Seal has, loves to chant. He sings on three songs with us. Uh, but Guru Singh was there and all the musicians who played in Satnam Fest were on stage, many microphones. And it was so, it was such an innocence that day. Such a pure joy of being in community. That I'm not surprised that one did well. 
Usually li live video recordings don't usually do as well as the studio produced ones, you know. Well, I, I, have to, I would have to close my eyes and kind of, uh, and that's, I've been doing a lot of that lately because I'm starting to feel that fire in my belly again. And, you know, it doesn't go away. Actually done, Sucker Tarsing and I, who plays rhythm guitar and does a lot of singing for Gurganesha Band, he and I live about uh, less than a mile away from each other. And we, uh, tail end of the summer, we did three live events as a duo. And, uh, you know, we played together 30, 35 years. So it's kind of like we know all the songs. And then, but it, 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 I'm kind of waiting. I'm waiting for uh, the demand. I used to put together tours and risk lots of money. Now it's I'm sitting. And if people are interested in having us come, then call me up, reach out to me, and we'll, uh, we'll see if we can work out a way to do it. Uh, but I have a feeling of, there's a few producers that started talking to me about organizing a tour. I sure would love uh, the pandemic to be uh, kind of considered by all the great scientists in our rearview mirror, because I don't necessarily want to be the cause of people coming together and then, and, and getting uh, COVID. So, uh, you know, I, I think it's going to happen uh, probably maybe fall of this coming year or spring. If, also, if the universe decides to keep uh, keep my physical body alive and vibrant, because, uh, you know, uh, um, it's a little bit more challenging, the touring at, in, in my 70s than it was in my 50s. So. I need some help. I need somebody to help cook for us, you know, super healthy food, uh, maybe somebody that uh, doesn't mind a few different jobs to be on the tour with us, you know. Help carry the gear so the old men don't uh, ruin their uh, their uh, backs. Well, let's, this is a perfect opportunity for us to send that intention out, right? And not only the audience listening to this, but also the universe will hear this. So Thank you. You know, Jatsi, I love this. Uh, share these new songs live, you know. I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Yesterday, I posted a little something. I recorded a few minutes of. I was singing a part of River, but it's it's that it's coming from that place to to reconnect with everybody, you know. Yes, I think that's super important. And I'm not saying this just because in this moment I'm living in Europe, but I just know that uh, when you all get back on the tour, please, please, please don't forget about Europe, right? Because I saw um, those. Um, on, on, on the internet, personally, even me, when I want to search for more or so of the live videos, right? Um, I believe most of them are like on tour in America. Yeah. Maybe there are a few. Um, they were like recorded very nicely in Switzerland or something. So, for example, you know, Spain, France, Italy, all those countries. Well, I've been waiting. I've been waiting for a, somebody to organize a Gurganesh or a Gurganesh band tour in Europe because that's an important part of it, you know. We had one tour organized uh, oh, maybe seven, eight years ago and just didn't sell enough advance tickets and had to postpone it or cancel it, you know. Maybe there'll be, uh, you know, maybe there'll be more enthusiasm for it now than I'm an old man with a long white beard. I don't know. <laughs> they always want good music and the music coming from the heart. That's for a fact. That is for a fact. For, um, so but I, I toured the Europe three or four times with Sonata and absolutely loved it. I mean, consciousness is truly alive. And, and you're, I mean, it's alive in America too. But I mean, to me, there's a, a higher percentage of people that I, I'm sensing in Europe that have really committed to living a lives of integrity and consciousness and, and, and unconditional love for everybody of all walks. And uh, that's beautiful. Hamburg, you know, Barcelona, Madrid, Madrid, uh, where uh, London, we had some beautiful experiences, London up in Stockholm, some beautiful, I mean, all over, uh, Copenhagen, Moscow, we had amazingly wonderful experiences, and, and we were, the concerts were like underground, you know, and, <laughs> but yeah, I, I put it on my bucket list, one more European tour, you know? Yes. Yes, absolutely. And um, some way, somehow that is going to happen. And the second we already start talking about it, it's like the universe already working on it to be on our side to make this happen. So, and um, and I will definitely do it within my power as much as possible to help and spread the name. That's for sure. Um, 
Well, I, 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 if you're able to put some people together who are inspired to do it, I will be a very willing participant and, and kind and loving to them every step of the way, right? <laughs> we make it a win. It has to be a win-win all. Everybody has to win. Absolutely. Please do. And that really... Um... Yes. Yes, yes. A thousand percent. And... Personally, I've been thinking about this for maybe a year or so because I'm um, I'm a very, very spiritual person, which I believe that at the end of the day, everybody is. So I do meditation, I do yoga, but also I'm very in the tech space, which is like Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, and blockchain, right? And I go to a lot of uh, this kind of tech events, right? And I've been having this idea about com combining or connecting two of them together right for example maybe there's a blockchain event and in between the day because it's you know it's a massive technology networking event right so a lot of talking a lot of doing right and maybe in between that two three times a day someone's leading a 15 or 20 30 minutes yoga or meditation session right and at the end of the day um when they have the after party or you know versus a party people just to you know um consume alcohol and eating great food, which is fine, absolutely. But maybe one of those nights, um, we have a concert and people actually sing together and, you know, just having all different kind of fun together. So, um, yeah, I love that idea. And I love the tech community because, you know, I've been working my other, you know, my day job has been in the tech, creative tech community for over 30 years, you know, and the minds are brilliant. And, uh, and a, a tremendous amount of spirituality. You know, my, one of my biggest clients for many years is Salesforce and their CEO, Mark Benioff, is very big. In, them. in fact, he, he built the two large, uh, tallest buildings in San Francisco a few years back for his company, although now everybody's working out of home. But he put a meditation room on every floor of both buildings. Like, it, so there is a lot of, and they, they carve out X amount of money a year for the hospitals, all humanitarians. So I love what's happening in the tech community. And I think people are receptive to this kind of music too, and singing and chanting together and, you know, and, and, and touching and uplifting the whole planet. So, yeah, I, love, I think that's a natural uh, harmonic convergence, you know, the tech universe and the sacred music universe. It all comes down to the idea and and then people are just spreading this idea using different um, formats, such as, you know, a mobile app where the music. And one of the biggest ideas out there is just connectivity and connection, and which is that is in the whole big category of unconditional love, in my opinion. So um, definitely would like to put a little bit more um, personally for me and my team side, definitely would like to working on that a little bit. And uh, when things unfold a little bit more, definitely uh, we'll keep you posted. Uh, Guru Ganesh, it would be such a pleasure we can, you know, be the first, one of the first people doing this. And um, I love how the universe is transmitting, uh, you know, all these visions through you, you know, and and you 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 meditate. So I, I imagine your meditations are very lively, huh? With with these visions, and uh, you know, I, you and I from the time we met, there was a there was a trust there. There's a resonance. So I, you know, I feel we may have a destiny as things unfold, working together in different ways, you know. But trust, trust what's coming through, man. It's beautiful. Absolutely, absolutely. So on that note about trust, right? So when it comes to having trust in yourself, in your partner or romantic partner or business partner and in God, in universe, in the creator, would you mind share with us, you know, after all those years you have experienced like some tips, if you will, or some advice on how to... You know, this is a very, very, you know, very simple words like how to have more trust, if you will. Yeah, just just realize that we all want to be loved, and uh, you know, the strife that happens in a relationship with a significant other or with a business partner is from is when fear kind of starts to become the you know more more dominant focus of one or two or both minds, and it's just to recognize. You know, when your partner's upset, there's some, there's some, it's, it's, can you get into your heart and be with them and listen to them and not let it trigger your fears, you know, your security fears or whatever it is. 
all it takes is one person to really fully be operating from their heart center. And after a while, the other person will start shifting from fear to love. But it's so easy when one person's in fear of something or they're disapproving of something that you're doing out of fear of, oh, it's going to take us over the cliff. And you're just being true. You're being true to your inner inspiration, your inner wisdom. So that's why collaboration, you know, it's, it's so important for us to move from individual consciousness because let's face it, if you're alone and you have enough money, you'll, you'll probably, your natural state is peaceful. You'll start longing for connection, but you'll probably be in peace. You're not going to be screaming and pulling your hair out, right? But in relationship, when we get in relationship with others, we have to be very mindful. Are we operating from this unconditional love? You know, and, and, and it's from a deep sense of knowingness that, you know what, everything's going to be okay. Because there's a part of you all of a sudden starts to get afraid. Everything's not going to be okay. And also some, some people just that you may be in partnership with are just, you know, their fear body is just dominant. And try as you might, you can't seem to help them to get into their heart. Maybe uh, you have to love them from a distance and disengage. But I, I think it's worth making the effort and asking yourself, am I just letting them trigger my fear body? Am I really coming from my heart? Because uh, when they're transmitting that kind of energy, ultimately I want to be empathetic and uh, because I know deep down they're in pain or they wouldn't be communicating that way. So I don't have to immediately assume that I caused it. Maybe that's they're working out stuff that happened to them when they were 11 years old. They're being triggered, right? Maybe there you said something in the same kind of a tone that their father said to them when they were 11 years old and it completely shattered their nervous system. So that means their reaction to you is magnified because it struck a nerve from the So, I mean, all the great teachers have been saying compassion. You know, I walk around with a turban and a beard in America. It's not the most popular look these days. Occasionally, I get somebody rolls down their window. Usually, maybe it's some young guys with too much testosterone roll their windows down and scream some insult at me. I smile. And I, I used to not. I used to give them the finger back. But now I smile and I do this and they don't know how to respond <laughs> because I'm immediately thinking, wow, these young guys are in, must be in a lot of pain to, to try yeah. to make a... 71 year old man feel bad about himself well they can't do it anymore maybe they could do it 20 years ago i don't feel bad about myself i feel empathy towards them and i pray that they find a way not to have to feel okay about themselves by making somebody else not okay that's a cause of all racism you name it it's this okay not okay dynamic that the only way i can feel okay about myself is to have other people or a group of people that I'm convinced they're less okay than me. They're less human than me. They're less conscious than me. I'm trying to even listen to the people who I don't agree with politically. You know, I'm super progressive politically. <laughs> but in my own blood family, I have Trump supporters, you know. <laughs> but, you know, if I have a lighthearted conversation with them from my heart, after a while, they start listening. But if I try to fight and convince them they have inferior opinions, it just gets worse. Does that help? Yes, it helps a lot. So follow up with that. Um, having super, super helpful when it comes to having more trust. Um, this is for me, definitely another follow up question for me personally, also for the generations, especially younger generations audience out there. Um, because I do know that Guru Ganesha, you are married and you have a big family. And do you have any relationship advice? Well, I think have crystal clear upfront understandings with people and then do the best you can to honor your commitment. And, uh, you know, I, my wife is deeply spiritual person, but she's very diff. She's wired very differently than me. And it's fascinating. And I'm still working on being a better listener and, uh, 
because I'm able to get into a peaceful state and able to enjoy life for extended periods of time, she's super sensitive. She feels things more deeply. So she's a little bit more up and down than I am, but that is such a beautiful thing. She's an activist. She's out fighting for everybody, you know? She's filling out postcards to get, to support candidates who who are trying to live for each or inspiring us to live for each other, not at each other, you know? So, so uh, I think if you're going to be in a relationship with somebody that wants to practice monogamy, then know it in advance and then commit to it and do your absolute best to, you know, to be faithful. And if, if you're, if you're a person and I'm not going to judge it, that just doesn't feel capable of monogamy, well, be honest and open about it and find people that, uh, you know, you can grow together with that, you know, share your philosophy. I don't want to judge anybody's choices. But I'm somebody, I'm married to a woman who really believes in keeping up and really believes in monogamy. And, and she's right in that we keep finding deeper levels of connection by hanging in there through the tough times. Yeah, well, I've had two. I had a failed marriage of almost 10 years, and now this marriage is about almost 35 years. And there wasn't that huge of a difference, uh, except okay. that I, 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 I feel really it's more on me. In the first marriage, I was much more macho, and no, no, no. I thought the role model was the guy is the leader, da, 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 all that bullshit. This marriage has been much more of a collaboration of, of two equals where we're doing our best to mutually respect also a different vantage point and it's a strength. And, and, uh, you know, my wife had many, many people that call her all the time just to talk to her because she has so much access to so much wisdom and love. So, uh, and it's a good example for our children and the grandchildren that yes. we're, that we're not just hanging in there, we're actually doing better, better than 10 years ago, better than, which was better than 20 years ago, you know? Yes. So do I, am I attracted to other people? Absolutely. As long as I have a human form, I mean, you know, there's going to be thoughts and feelings and things, except now I just accept them, embrace them, give those thoughts a hug, but I don't act on those thoughts. Why? Because I can understand the consequence of the sequences. If you slow yourself down enough, any choice you make, you can walk through the sequence, right? If I go down this road, here is, there's a high probability that catastrophe is gonna be down the road a ways. <laughs> and I, 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 I'm not into creating my own catastrophic situations. I prefer, uh, you know, love and enjoyment and, uh, you know, uh, not letting the, uh, the, the mind and emotions be in total control. I'm sure Guru Ganesha, you heard about this a lot from a lot of people, but I have to say it again, that every single time when I'm talking to you is just so flow it's just so free. Like I'm, I'm sure that later on when I go back and me and my team will edit this video, it's like, I'm just like smiling this whole time of our conversation, really like just energy. It just, um, so even th through the screen that I can feel it. So, um, want to share that with you and acknowledge you for that. It's just truly, absolutely amazing, which is, I think this is, um, um, a lot of artists are like this. I think Pablo Picasso had this quote saying that all children are artists, except when they grow up, they, well, all children are geniuses. Um, except when they grow up, they forgot about their own, you know, and, um, and then actually another story, because I was actually down in Malaga, which is the city that Pablo Picasso was born. And there's a story talking about at the end of his stay, uh, at the end of his career, he went to visit, um, an art show with his friends. And those art exhibitions are like very, very young kids, like teenage, like 13, like we're 11 to 15. Right. And he looked at those paintings and he said, when I was at their age, I could draw like yeah, Raphael, which is an Italian Renaissance painter, which he drew everything perfectly. But he said it took me the whole life to be able to paint like them. So, right. Um, 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, in this case, right? In this case, what I think the real artists, you know, um, such like I don't know. In my opinion, I never talked to the people like Michael Jackson, Prince, you know, um, people you have worked with yourself. I think for the real artists, when it comes down to for their creation, it just really because it's so coming from the heart for them, it's almost like playing. It's just like literally like really playing the guitar, right? It's like you. It's like when you're a kid, when you're playing with your friends, right? You weren't necessarily thinking about what would be the next move, and you know, I'm. I'm sure that Kobe Bryant or LeBron James, when he get on the court, they don't necessarily get into their head, think about what would be the next one, but it's just like, it's just a flow through them. Um, and having conversation with you is exactly like that. And um, uh, I believe that people, a lot of people listening to this conversation, also they will um, get a sense of feeling that everybody can live in that flow. So. Jatsi, heartfelt gratitude for expressing that to me. That felt so good. And, uh, you know, because I'm a human being, I, I have insecurities too. And uh, so, it, it, you know how as human beings, we kind of have a committee up here of voices. And I have a, I have a voice that I've had since I was a little boy that kind of, uh, uh, that seeks approval. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I think that voice has become a little bit less important, but that child is still there and I hug him. So it does feel really good in my heart when uh, you approve of our interaction, you know? And uh, I, I, I really loved what you told me about the, the children that Picasso visit because, and my son is doing such a beautiful job. He has three children with his, uh, my lovely daughter-in-law, Jennifer. And their philosophy of child rearing is very different than mine was. They believe each child has their own unique true nature. And they try to support, try to leave them and be as much as possible and support them in moving in whatever direction they're inspired to move. And obviously, as parents, you have to have some boundaries so they don't kill themselves. But in uh, uh, each of the three children are very different. They're going to different schools now, but they have such beautiful sense of self because their parents and now their grandparents are supporting that them to be exactly who they are. And I think that's kind of what Picasso was saying. That's the most beautiful, that part that comes from this playful, joyful child that creates, that, that's kind of what I'm trying to do now with the music. And, and, and I think that's what Cullen was telling me too. She said, Gurganesha, you know, you're always trying to make everything sound so perfect. No, I, be you, be, make it, just, just sing the raw you. And, and she helped me fall in love with my own voice. And now I'm just, you know, the reason I want to record more music is in the, and make more songs is, yeah, I want to get more music out there. But even more so, I want to get up and get into the playpen and the sandbox and play. You know, creating music is like you say, it's just, it's just play. It's not work. Anybody that says it's work is maybe has to take a step back. <laughs> I mean, I know people out there who have jobs that are work, you know, and I pray that they can find ways to either find joy in what they're doing and just surrender and enjoy, or find some ways to gradually move into spending their conscious hours doing things that bring them the joy that a child gets. About like how everybody live in this flow state and, you know, things and creativity and all the solutions just like flow through them. Besides meditating on the heart, Guru Ganesha, do you have any um, things you would like to share that, or the things that you do from a day-to-day um, -day basis that help you get into the flow or get into the zone? Some rituals or habits, maybe? Yes. I'm really a big believer in uh, the ancient science of pranayama, which is you, you know using the breath in different ways to uh, produce different states. That Since you're, you're the chariot driver, the soul is, and I want to optimize the effectiveness of my mind, my and emotions. And uh, so, uh, you know, if you if you were to check right now, like in myself as well, that the average human being, when they're just at rest and normal and not thinking about breathing, it's taking maybe twelve to twenty breaths per minute. When you're stressed out, if you were to check, you're probably taking twenty to thirty breaths per minute, and they're shallow. So your breathing becomes more shallow and rapid when you're in panic, full fear mode. 
your breath rate can be, you know, well over 30 breaths per minute. <laughs> You've seen people, right? So it's common sense if you go in the opposite direction. Oh, by the way, so when, when you're breathing rapid and shallow, one of the reasons you, you, have, you feel a sense of overwhelm often because your mind is producing so many thoughts per millisecond because the more rapid and shallow you breathe, the more active your mind becomes. Now, if you can go the opposite direction and instead of, instead of moving from 12 to 20 to 20 to 30 or 30 above, you can get your breath rate down to maybe under five breaths per minute or maybe even down to one breath per minute or fewer for five, 10 minutes, all of a sudden you'll notice that your mind calms down because sometimes people don't ever rest their mind even at night when they sleep there and dream all the time. The mind slows down uh, and then you start producing fewer thoughts. And try this, don't just believe me, experience it yourself. The thoughts that the mind does produce are higher caliber, more conscious, more loving, more empathetic thoughts. So before I meditate on my heart, I try to do five to 10 minutes. Of, I have four or five different pranayams that I do that slows my breath rate down to close to one breath per minute or less. Then I move from that state into perfect stillness, which is easy at that point. If you, if you try to sit in perfect stillness and meditate at your heart, when your mind is overactive, it's almost impossible to do. You know, you hear people say, oh, I can't meditate. Well, it could also, if you like to exercise, go out for a 30 minute run or a swim or weight lift, then do five, 10 minutes of pranayama. Then you'll be in the most beautiful meditative state, which will give you tremendous hope because you'll realize what an amazing, magical being you are. And if you have that experience on a regular basis, you know, no one can convince you that you're not enough. No one can convince you that you're not enlightened. No one can, can convince you that you're lacking anything. It seems like you do that already. The easiest one to do is like, uh, uh, I was in the dentist for two, uh, office yesterday for two full hours. New crown, four cavities. I put too much honey in my teeth, you know, whatever it is. But the entire time I was doing the one minute breath while they're drilling, I did, I, I did let them put some Novocaine in there. I don't feel like suffering needlessly to prove a point is going to prove my manner. So I got the, but even so it's intimidating to have somebody with a big drill in there. And I did a long, slow inhale through both nostrils. Cause even with the goggles on hold the breath for as long as I comfortably can, which could be eight, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Slowly exhale through both nostrils, and then hold the breath out for a few seconds. And then with each repetition, make each part a little slower and longer. And at the end, they said, oh, Mr. Kalsa, we love having you here. You're so relaxed and it's so easy to work on you. So not only did I have a better experience, the den dentist and her assistant had a better experience too. And I had more positive thoughts. I started to feel, wow, this, this is God working on my teeth. And they're making corrections that are going to last a lifetime so that I can be comfortable. And feeling blessed, like knowing so many people don't have the privilege or the resources to get this kind of treatment that I'm getting here. So in any event, the breath can take you to the deepest meditation on the heart. It's a nice way to access your heart. That's why we talk about conscious breathing because most your everybody's breathing, but they're not necessarily conscious of it. It's just happening. So it's a very magical. It it carries life force, and when you let you know, all of a sudden you realize, hey, this is a a, a gift that I can be more conscious about, and and access this unlimited creative potential that's stored in your nervous system, you know, uh, uh, you could, by, by learning how to breathe consciously, you can access energies that you weren't even aware that you had. Instead of being relying on three shots of espressos with every, you know, two, two shots in my latte is enough, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Um, 
By the way, do you still drink coffee, Guru Ganesha? You know, sometimes if I I'm in the studio working on a song and I my fingers aren't quite、uh, doing what my mind knows they could be doing, a little bit of coffee helps. I like I like it with、uh, made with、uh, you know hot milk and a few shots of espresso. It goes down nice and easy. But mostly in the morning, I have a I have a a, a cup of、uh, tea.、Uh, I mix black tea with the、uh, raw honey. And a little bit of half and half, or a, and a, you know something. Sipping tea, even all the great Buddhist teachers felt there was something very spiritual about just a cup. But I think you told me once the importance of just sitting and sipping your tea, and just being and enjoying whatever the company may be. I I've I, I've drunk about oh, look at that. <laughs> somebody gifted me with this. Being a Ganesh elephant head son of Lord Shiva, they gifted me with a, and they heard I like a big mug of tea. So this is an elephant mug. I call it my Ganesh mug. Oh no 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 no! With a, a teacup signed by me and five dollars, you could get a latte probably. <laughs> no. <laughs> I I don't I just want to be uh, uh, you know I just want to be of service and if that involves me singing and playing the guitar I'm happy about that because I know I I will love it but I can also be of service every day just with a smile too and and being kind to everybody that I interact with and absolutely amazing、um, acknowledge you. Not only me saying, but representing if I can or if I could represent the whole community and everybody you know that have likely enough listened to your music,、um, that you are doing great and you are truly that pouring out how you really feel. And I have this feeling that this album might be obviously you know this is just my feeling.、Um, this album might be the most authentic or the most raw. Album and、um, a few sets of music that you ever created so far, and we just cannot wait to hear more about the update and the more the EP, the song from this album. We're very, very, very excited.、Uh, could you tell us uh, when um, exactly the date the next song will be dropped? I, I have to call Karen. Karen told me because I finished the song a few weeks ago, and she said, and they're rolling out different songs every week from our, our my fellow artists, Ram Das. And uh, uh, Ajit and Sukhmani, and, you know, beautiful Jaijak Dish, beautiful music. So I think、uh, she said January. My guess is it'll be on a Friday, and I'll get you the exact date when I have it from her. But probably the second or third Friday in January. You know, will come out、uh, the the U two song. I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think people are going to enjoy this song, and then then I have a beautiful kind of farewell prayer two months later. That people can sing for each other, you know, and、um, and that'll be all for this album, you know. Amazing, and hopefully after that we get some、uh, um, crypto concerts going on and or the European tour. So yes, yeah, it's really growing so so much in the crypto and tech industry, and people just、um, when something's new, people are just extremely extremely enthusiastic about it, and I think、um, that is always good, but also at the same time keeping people. Very very grounded in this industry and will actually help everybody, right? Because、um, we want people to make decisions. Hey, I'm very I'm very open to have an exploratory discussion about a crypto concert. You know. Yes, absolutely. It will truly be my pleasure. And、uh, even you know, this crypto industry also is going to and is actually happening right now to disrupt the、uh, music industry as well. So、um, there is. Well, first, I would also like to have a deeper understanding, and you can be my my cryptocurrency mentor. At some point, we have a chat, and you give me the overview. You know, the hundred thousand foot view, so I can better understand exactly what it is. And、uh, I hope, I I hope that whatever happens takes better care, particularly the younger artists are struggling, and、uh, I would like to see them get a little bit larger percentage of the revenues that are generated. But you know. I'm not exactly quite sure how to do that, you know. Yes, yes, and、um, and actually, crypto world, this blockchain technology is playing its part of it, 
as well because um we definitely don't have to go too much into this this time you know or maybe in the next episode we can talk a little bit more about that right but it's like when there are problems that at the beginning a human try to do the uh, try to solve the problem themselves and little by little then they realize they can actually solve the problem by technology right when uh, every time when there's an innovation um being presented or coming into life that the innovation is not twice better than before or five times is usually 10 times a hundred times or maybe even a thousand times more efficient than before right for example internet right like before internet or before we had this ten, uh communication tools right for me to be able to be in touch with you uh from madrid to the east coast of america maybe you had to write a letter and then be you know like that would maybe take two months for you to receive that letter but now we are literally doing this conversation live and we're in totally i think if we're taking a plane from madrid to the east coast it will take us like i don't know like 11 hours right but we're doing this right here in this moment and it literally is a thousand times better than the communication before so and um and blockchain crypto just a different one so yeah <laughs> absolutely it's amazing it's so brilliant that uh, you know your generation is just phenomenal and I, I'm thinking, God, if I'm blessed, I could be around another two, three decades. Just experience what's happening and what's going to continue to happen. I do love Zoom. I mean, uh, you know, I have a granddaughter who's learning. I, I'm teaching how to play the guitar. She lives near Santa Fe, New Mexico. Well, I can, I can give her a guitar lesson and see her face and see her hands. But without this incredible technology... You know, we maybe we'd see each other once or twice a year at best. It's phenomenal. I love what you young people are doing. Keep it up. Keep it up. And I and I bow, I bow to the light of your soul, man, and all your listeners. And, and I just bow to the incredible light and wisdom that is your true nature, your true essence. I'm humbled by it and love you. I love you, my man. Thank you so much, Guru Ganesha. Love you too. And bow to your true self and your wisdom within as well. And um, keep shining. Keep shining that we're always on the right path. And um, as Ram Dasa, we're here to walk in each other home. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time and giving these opportunities. And yeah, we're going to do this again within the next month or so. Definitely. You have, uh, I, uh, God willing, I'm still with us. We shall do it. You are going to, and you are with us next month and the next year, two years, and as long as you want to, you know, as um, as a man thinking is his heart, so, so is he, right? So I accept whatever the, you know, the divine wisdom, you know, chooses to uh, use yeah. me for. Yeah, absolutely. I trust Guru Ganesha, your mission is not done here yet, you know, maybe just the beginning, right, of a whole new chapter, so. Thank you so much. All right. Peace to all. Love to all. Life to all.